Okay guys, uh, it's time to adjust my gears. So, um, I notice sometimes when I'm shifting uh, up at the stick, especially when I'm going into first, it misses first. Um, I'll show you what I mean by it misses first. And um, it's going into sort of no gear, so I need to adjust that. And I'll show you how to do that and where to sit it. This is the rear pan. Uh, should I say the under under pan for um, the gearbox? You need to take it off. Obviously, you're going to need a new gasket. I have a spare one. I like to order a few spares of gaskets for just such an occasion. When you take this off, 10 mil bolts. I'm replacing my nuts. I should say 10 mil nuts. I'm replacing the nuts. I've had to replace a couple of um, studs as well down there. One on this side and one up on that side. Um, few others probably need replacing as well uh, but I'm not going to do them because they're okay they're just you know this is where they leak this is why the pans leak they leak through the stud the old stud so if you put new studs in all the way around in your engine and gearbox generally you mitigate a lot of the um, a lot of the leak but all these old Ferraris they all leak anyhow um, when you take this off you have to be really careful because in this area here Okay, see those little rings there. Okay, so there's three positions there. I've got it marked there, there, and there. Okay, so that one's slightly indented, that one's quite a ways, and that one's flat, flush. This stuff here comes out. So don't lose your three ball bearings, your three springs, and your one spacer. That spacer is the one that sits here. Then you have a spring and a ball, on top of that, kind of like the way it's pictured there, there's the spacer, spring, and then you would put the ball on top, okay, like that, see that scenario there, one, two, three, then the other two just have spring and ball, okay, one is going to sit on there with a spring and then a ball on top, and then one's going to sit in there with a spring in there and a ball on top, so there's going to be like three, three sizes, as in three heights. Um, you know, like my fingers there, there's two, so you're going to have one, two, three, so stepped, in other words. Be careful when you're putting this back in, that you are, I've done one before, I've done my selector shaft back in the day, um, my um, cup seals on my selector shaft, because they leak as well, and um, you had to take all this off, obviously, so I'm going to go under there and adjust these gears now, and I'll show you what I mean, so just be really conscious of that, okay, when you take this pan down, you want to find three ball bearings, three springs, and that spacer for this area here. When I go to put it back in, I'll go into more detail about it. Okay, I'm going to go down under the car and show you what I need to adjust. Okay, so I'm under the car now, and I'm looking into the selector, sh uh, the selector forks. Okay, so what you're looking at here... Is it just there, those three that are coming out? There's one, two, and three. And then you can see that fork-shaped thing coming from the other side of it. Um, it's quite difficult for me to film this and point around, so I'll just do my best. Uh, where are we again? There we are. Okay. So that's the one I want to adjust. I want to adjust that. I want to undo that bolt there and then move this so what I want is if you can see how that's sitting quite this fork here is sitting quite flush with that center one okay the car is currently in neutral in this stage that should be sitting a little bit lower than that so when it's adjusting this fork instead of coming down and grabbing this one and putting it in first it's missing that one altogether and going down here so it's going in that space there so it's missing it. It's missing it all together. So I want that to be sitting different. Okay, so I don't want it exactly right, exactly online like it is there. Okay, so currently the car's in neutral. So um, I will show you what I mean on one that's been adjusted correctly. And it's a fairly easy adjustment. It just might need a couple of tweaks to get it spot on right. If you've got two people, it makes it a lot easier because you can have someone in the car pressing the clutch and um, moving the gears 
while you can check them but if you've got a camera while you can you can sort of check it as you um uh, you adjust it and then come and you know film it and then have a look at it and see how well it's going and you can often tell by the feel of the selector of the uh, gear stick because um, you'll know if it doesn't go into a gear or is chunky into a gear you'll know um, these cars generally change a bit chunky at first when they first start them up before the oils you know before the oils warm this car often would go from second uh, first to second and second gear would be a little bit of a push to push it into gear um, until the oils are warmed and then once the gearbox oil is nice and warm then you wouldn't notice it but it's, apparently that's quite common but um, still it shouldn't be too difficult to push in so um, this probably needed adjusting anyway but I think it moved when I was doing all the work on um, moving the engine and so on so I think it moved so I need to adjust it so that's one of the studs that I replaced and that's another one there you can see they're nice studs a little bit longer than the original ones but it doesn't matter there's uh, plenty of room plenty of room for the studs to come out they're, they're proper studs I ordered from um, uh, Superformance once again I ordered a few studs here and there for the engine gearbox they're the same ones for the motor and gearbox um, pans so just you know, a few spares just just in case you'd you'd muck one up and then you've got to wait a week or two weeks to um, to get a new one. I just noticed now that's unplugged just there. That's good. It's another thing I've found to check. So many little things, but uh, I'm pretty sure I'm about 99%. So uh, I'll show you what proper operation of this this contraption here is, and I'll show you exactly what I'm trying to do. Okay, here we go. It's in reverse. It's going to get moved to neutral. That's neutral. First, second, third, fourth, and fifth. And you'll notice, see how it's sitting just a little bit off on that second one, that one there, when it's sitting in neutral. Let's rewind that. When it goes back to neutral, I'll show you what I mean. There. Ah, damn it. Press the wrong thing. We'll just run through that again. There we go. Okay, so typical. Get a message right when I'm trying to film something on my phone. So you notice it's a, right where that arrow is, it's a little bit high on that one there. It's not exactly parallel. On mine it's a bit parallel, so um, I need to adjust mine to look like this. I've used this film footage. Um, I'm just putting a shout out to Andy. Thanks mate for posting this. Um, it's, uh, it's been a good help for me. Uh, I've done this once before, but um, it's good to see one that's adjusted correctly, which yours is by the look of it. And um, yeah, thanks very much for this little bit of footage that I'm knocking off appreciate it anyhow um, I'm gonna go adjust mine and show you how that's done it's pretty easy okay so we know it's gonna be in neutral when we do the adjustments so notice what I've done here on my thing on my stick I put a little bit of cork on either side so what that's doing is that's ensuring that this is nice and central and staying um, it's a little trick and it's staying where it needs to be. Okay, um, now I'm going to go under the car and um, film as best I can where to adjust it. Okay, so you see that nut in the center of shot? That's 13 mil, and that's what you're going to need to loosen off. And you're just twisting that clamp basically on the shaft to make that center fork sit a little bit high on that center finger we'll call it a finger okay so to get to this it's not that difficult you put it neutral and you can adjust it fairly well just watch that gear there that one there don't whack it so you can either use a small extension or a universal joint 
I'm probably I've already loosened it a little bit so I used a straight extension sometimes universal joints can work against you um, but you will get in there but just be really cautious that you if you touch that gear that you're only just really lightly touching it don't go slipping in and whacking it and chipping a tooth off it or something like that that would not be good that would be terrible actually all right, so I've already loosened it, so you want to do it up fairly tight because if you don't, these will slip and you'll be driving along and all of a sudden you won't get a particular gear. You'll only get so many gears and if it's, you know, if it's third, well, okay, it's not too bad. Um, you might be able to get home, but otherwise it's going to be putting it on a truck because um, if you don't have your top gears, you're going to be doing 10 kilometers an hour home. Right, so I'm going to undo that one. So you come in from that side there. I'm trying to, this is really awkward to film. Sorry, guys. So you're coming in from there, and you're just going into there and undoing that. Like I said, I've already you see there, I've already done it. See that gear and just moved. That's what the universal joint's doing. It's moving that gear. So I don't want that. I'm going to put the um, little stubby on. Okay, so I'm going to do that, move that, adjust it and come back because I cannot hold the camera and film that at the same time. Okay, I'll be back in a minute. It actually felt pretty good. It actually felt pretty good in the car. So um, I'm going to now view it here and see what I think. Okay, well I've run through the gears a number of times and nothing's getting caught. It's going into all the gears. They're not, you know, like they're not just slotting in easily, but they never do with a gated shifter anyway. But they're, um, they're going in with minimal ease, or should I say minimal effort. So I'm pretty pleased with that. So it's in neutral at the moment. You can see it's sitting slightly above parallel on that center finger. So the fork around the finger. Okay, so um, I'm pretty confident with that. There's a good shot of it there. Okay, I'm pretty confident of that. So I'm going to now reinstall clean a little bit of the surface off here get the old gasket go off and um, and get this ready for um, reinstallation of the pan so there are the holes here so notice that one there that one obviously is going to go into the deep hole that's in the um, cover and then there's that recess and then there's that one so this is where your ball bearings go. So you just got to make sure that's that's all it is. It's not that technical. You just got to make sure each one has a spring and a ball bearing in it. 
okay important all right cool okay this is the configuration for our springs and balls okay spacer so this is the front of the car going that way the trunk is this way okay so you can't really get this orientated wrong because this here is a lug that comes out from the bottom of the gearbox um, housing that goes in there so this spring see where that yellow dot is he goes there he just rests on top and then there's a spring and then there's a ball bearing then the center one takes a spring and the ball bearing and the third one takes a spring and the ball bearing okay very important you put these in very important otherwise your car will not change gear properly okay so don't lose these little suckers look for them as soon as you take that pan out look for them they normally fall in the pan or they have in my my experience and you you can lose them in the oil if you're not expecting them so you must expect them to come out normally you'll hear them and you'll think oh god what's that but if you know to expect it then it won't be an issue okay cool okay I've just been looking at the studs on the pan underneath or which I'm what I'm about to put on the pan onto um, so what I'm talking about is all these studs here underneath the car I replaced two as I said I'm um, getting to my spare parts box and I've got about another five of them these are the same for the engine uh, motor oil as well the engine sump as well so I've got about five of them left the others in here are for um, other parts of the car they're exhaust manifold ones those ones um, so I've got there's two there they're not they're um, those longer ones pretty sure they're to cam cover so those ones right there pretty sure they're um, cam cover studs quite a few of them are pretty crap um, I've just been screwing the um, bolts the nuts I should say onto them just to just to check them um, so I'm not going to replace them all because I don't have enough to replace them all but I'm going to just pick all the suspect one one is a definite I'm going to pull it out and I'm just might as well I've got the other four so I might as well pick the other four tightest ones that the nuts are um, feeling tight on and um, and just pull them out and replace them now the way I do it um, this is the way I do it you don't have to do it that way is of course when I put them in it's the old double nut trick to put them in pretty easy okay um, however to take them out so that's in the block what I do is I grind flat see that flat and flat I grind both sides and then I just simply get a six inch spanner and wind them out that's the easiest way and the quickest way I find um, you can try the double nut trick but I find that the nuts can slip on them when you're taking them out because they might be in pretty tight putting them in is fine because you don't have to put them in real tight as long as they're seated in as long as they're seated in there that's what's important okay but um I mean you want them tight but not you know, like I always say you know I'm, I'm very paranoid about stripping stripping balls but you can see that one there look at that over the years yeah it's disgusting isn't it and then I've grinded that side and that side to um to take it out okay so you're just basically making a flat and they come out really easy when you do that that's what I'm going to do with the five more suspect ones that I find I wish I had more but I don't these aren't that cheap but you know I, once I replace and the ones I replace I'm, I'm probably never going to have to replace them again in my lifetime well hopefully um, I think they're around seven 
dollars Australian, I think it was something like that. I don't think they're seven pound, but yeah, they were around, you know, the better part of ten dollars each. So they're not cheap, but they're not super expensive for what they do. And these studs won't leak because it's these old studs that leak through. Um, they leak through from here. From there, they leak through and then come through and then drip off the end of your nut. Okay, so I'm going to um, wind those ones out. I'll find the five that I don't want, grind them down, wind them out, and then I'll wind these ones back in. All right. Okay, so there's the five studs that I didn't like. Brought them out. And you can see I used the old grind technique on each of them. They came out very easy. It's a very easy way to get them out. You're not going to use them again. And there's the five new ones that I'm going to put in using the double lock nut trick. Okay. Okay, they're the seven studs that I replaced using that technique. You just have to be very careful when you're grinding that you don't go grinding the castings at all or anything that you're not meant to be grinding. And I covered I actually covered it with, um, when I say covered it, I covered all the gears with some cardboard. I made a stencil of that pan and just shoved it up there on the uh, on the studs. And um, so all the grindings were hitting that and deflecting off and not going into the gearbox. I mean, they're minimal, minimal grindings, but you just don't want that stuff going in the gearbox. Um, so yeah, they're all good, so that's 7 out of 14. The other 14 are pretty good. Only replace the ones that you really need to. I mean, if your threads are looking like... Um, is that a good one? Yeah, that's not too bad. If your threads are looking sort of like that, well then they're going to be okay. But um, if I can find... yeah, see that? Ignore the flats, but you can see there... That thread there is not looking good where my fingers are. Pretty much where the flat is. Grinding's got nothing to do with that. You can see the difference between where my fingers are and a little bit past before the um, before that part there. That thread there is nice, and then it goes to there, and you can see it's crap. So yeah, you only really want to do them. That's a good example of a really crap thread. Look at that one. That's cactus there. Look at that side. Okay, anyhow, that's done. So now I'm comfortable about putting um, those nuts on. So I'm putting new stainless steel nuts on there. I believe they're stainless steel anyway. Okay, next job. Go up the pan, get it ready for installation. Okay, the gasket's ready to go on. Um, it looks like there's a lot of goo on there, but believe me, there isn't. I've just spread it out a little bit, so it's not going to compress much more than what it has. Try to stay more on this side than on the inside like I've got on a little bit close there but I've wiped that off it's just black it's not actually there's virtually nothing on there. If I get in close to it you'll see what I mean. You can see the difference there between where I've wiped on that edge there so like and I've done it again there there's virtually nothing on there. Okay I'm gonna stick that onto the bottom I'm going to come back and glue this side up. Okay, the pan's ready to go on, and I've paid close attention to this area here. Um, you don't want you don't want too much around there because you don't want that silicon getting into those ball bearings, uh, into those springs, I should say, and ball bearings, and, and messing them around. So I'm going to get that on now with no further delay. Remember the spacer ball and spring, ball and spring, can't go wrong, <laughs> famous last words. Okay, she's all in, all talked up, you're basically just tweaking these, you're not, um, you're not doing them up really tight, there's no need, just tight, so you know, normal, kind of like your cam covers, same sort of thing, yeah, sort of gasket in between, so just needs to be tweaked up. Um, putting those ball bearings and um, springs in 
is a challenge. It's not an easy thing to do. Uh, however, it is more than possible. You just got to make sure when you're when you're actually closing it up, you're ready to press the plate onto the bottom of the engine. You watch them go in. You watch. You make sure everything's going in the way it should. I put a tiny bit of silicon at the top of the spring virtually just like just a little dab on the ring of the top of the spring to hold the ball bearing on there um, and I'm in a very small amount it's quite sticky so very small amount just to hold that ball bearing on the top there so it didn't fall off so it balanced well and that worked fine and I don't think that tiny little bit of silicon in there is going to make is going to do any um, any problem it was it was a really small amount um, you make your own mind up if you think that's a good idea or not um, it was a very very small amount we're talking about a millimeter wide ring on the top of it just to make sure that ball bearing didn't fall off uh, so I did it from the uh, left hand side of the car came in from underneath the clutch kind of thing I'm at the back of the car at the moment it's the diff there so it's uh, I watched them all go in I'm happy with it I'm comfortable I'm, I'm confident that it's um, that it's right so now it's on to the next job because I'm glad I've adjusted those gears uh, I'm gonna let everything um, settle down and dry and before I do anything else um, to the gearbox which there isn't really anything else to do except move the gears, try the gears in the car, but I'm not going to move that gear stick until um, probably tomorrow. I just want to make sure everything's dry. I just don't want to touch anything. I don't want to adjust anything, move anything, touch anything. Just let this settle in and then we're done. Cool. See you at the next part.